the whole Nidhi Sanji employment contract has been leaked. This is a big piece of news that, of course, I wanted to cover with you guys. I wanted you guys to be here with me. I do appreciate every single bit. Thank you for this. Legal Mindset was the one who set it up. Legal Mindset was the one who had the information out there. I'm just taking what he had and giving my take on the whole thing. This is where it all starts. We start with the Business Entrustment Agreement, which is basically an employment contract. From what I've seen, from what I've gathered from everything, this is basically making you an employee. It's not so much anything regarding a um, contractor agreement because of what they force you to do. Any color ink hereafter referred to as party A and blank here and after referred to as party B entered into the following agreement here and after referred to as agreement regarding party B's live streaming activities, including uploading a video, recording activities, creation of work and entertainment activities as a VTuber. Article one definition. The definitions of the terms used in the agreement shall be set forth in the following items. The interpretation of definitions of terms in this agreement are not set forth here and shall be in accordance with the interpretation of civil code copyright law or other laws and regulations. The fact that they didn't mention which ones puts them in a bit of a bind from what I've heard. It may not be the best thing to do when you don't name the exact civil codes that you have there. That way, you know, it can be interpreted by like, for example, I live in the US in the US civil codes instead of the Japanese ones. Individual agreement means the agreement entered individually into by party A between party A and party B with respect to an agreement and the program. Two, performance means the acting, dancing, musical performance, singing, reciting, declaiming, or performing in other ways of work, including similar acts which do not involve the performance of a work which have been the nature of public entertainment. So it means they could actually, you know, performing is them doing their, their duties, but since it says dancing, etc., it could be actual physical duties. That's the mistake that they made with uh, putting performance there, I think, the way that they did. Phonograms seems very strange. It's phonograms is something like from the 1920s. Don't know why they have it here, but let's read it. Phonograms mean fixations of sounds on phonographic discs, recording tapes, and other forms of tangible medium, excluding, however, those fixations of sound that are intended to uh, be replayed exclusively with images. So I don't know why they put that there. It's kind of old, but basically saying, you know, anything recorded, I guess, in this case. Program means the programs related to various performances by the VTuber and or other performance planned by party A. In the event that the name or content of a program is changed for whatever reason, the program after such shall be included. After such change will be included, so that's their program. Performances uh, by a VTuber or other performers planned by party A, planned by Niji Sanji in this case. A VTuber is the performer mainly live streaming or uploading videos in the ho video hosting services, such as characters designated by party A. So anything done through YouTube, etc., and they are performing mainly live, that's the VTuber according to them. Images, etc., means videos, images, audios, and other contents. Distribution of contents means live streaming or uploading images, etc., on the video hosting service account designated by party A as the character designated by party A. So if they want you to do it on Google, on, on uh, Facebook, on Meta, on any other kind of stuff, they can do that and they can force you to do that. Distribute your contents there because they're the ones who have you there. Video hosting service account means the account designated by party A for the distribution of the contents of YouTube and other external services. So your video hosting service account is anything, your YouTube account, anything that you're doing video stuff for, uh, and content distribution, basically, uh, you know, YouTube for the most part. Character means the character separately designated by party A as a character to be used by VTuber in the performance. So character is separate from VTuber, for, and this is kind of the strange thing. It seems like character just based on here is separated from the VTuber. Um, it could be your, in this case, you know, Yugo or any other performer like that. But since they separated them both, it can become uh, analogous. It can become like, you know, kind of weird here. Social media account means accounts designated by party A for the purpose of disseminating information on social media as part of the VTuber activities, such as accounts in the name of character of Facebook, Twitter, or external services. That's your social media accounts that they give you. Social media disseminating means blogging, tweeting, writing, and other dissemination um, of information as a character on the social media account. VTuber training program means a training program. This is number 12. VTuber training program means a training program held by party A to instruct VTuber on the standards and precautions to be observed in conducting VTuber activities. That's their VTuber training program. If you're in training, if you have to go through training, you are an employee as far as I'm, as far as I know in California law, where I'm at in US law. And I think even in Canadian law, if you are being trained for something, you are an employee, I believe. Materials, etc., means smartphones, applications. This is number 13. Software related to the program's manual systems, materials, and other equipment necessary for VTuber activities. 14. The account means the video hosting service account and the social media account. 15. Account information means user ID and password related to the account. 
16 external services means the services provided by other providers that are used for the implementation of activities under the program. 17, external service provider means service providers of external services. 18, the external terms of use means the terms and conditions set forth by the relationship of rights between party B and the external service provider. So that's the terms of use that they have there. Intellectual rights means like intellectual property and such. Means copyright, patent rights, utility model rights, trademark rights, design rights, and other intellectual property rights, including the right to acquire such rights or to apply for registration. So if they need to trademark you, that's gonna be their intellectual rights. Confidential information which is important for a lot of things that we've been seeing recently uh, means all information regarding party A's technology business operations finances organization and other matters that party B has been provided with or disclosed by party A in writing orally or in a recorded medium or become aware of in connection with this agreement individual agreements or the program provided however except for one information that was already generally known to the public uh, or was known to party B at the time of party B was provided or disclosed by party A uh, two, information that has become public knowledge throughout publications or other media. Party B has been provided but disclosed by Party A or has become aware of such information through reasons not attributable. This is primarily saying anything that you would not know through any public means. Anything that is not being out there publicly for everyone to already know, then those things are confidential information and you cannot spread that. I believe Hololive has a provision like this too. Most companies do. So you say, you know, information lawfully obtained uh, by party B from a third party who is authorized to provide or disclose it and obligated to maintain confidentiality. Information developed by party B independently without the use of confidential information or five information for which party B has received written confirmation from party A that confidentiality is not required. Article two, article two. Purpose. During the terms of this agreement, Party B shall, as the exclusive VTuber of Party A, perform duties set forth in Article 3, Paragraph 1, as we had read before, uh, the VTuber activity section, for Party A or third party designated by Party A in accordance with the instruction of Party A, and shall not perform these activities for third party without prior approval, which means that they can only do it for Nidhi Sanji. If they want to do it for Capcom or whatever, they have to go through the whole, uh, you know, approvals through Party A, which is Nidhi Sanji in this case. The con Article 3, the content of VTuber activities. The content of VTuber activities shall be as follows. 1. Performing distribution of content, performing of social media disseminating, performance of uh, appearance on television, radio, records, videos, movies, plays, concerts, commercials. So this kind of sounds like they can dock somebody. They can make you show yourself physically in a location for television, radio, records. Of course, we know Hololive doesn't do that. Hololive has you appear as your persona, but they can kind of dox you in that way that you actually have to have your person there. A lot of times they can actually make you do that. For conducting any press conferences for television, radio, newspapers, magazines, etc., uh, any other matters ancillary or related to any of the above items, the effective term of the VTuber activities shall be from the date of execution of this agreement to the date of termination. So from when you sign to when it's done. In the event that the date of termination of this agreement is during an effective term of the individual agreement, then the date of termination of the individual agreement is the one that's used. So if they terminate you before your one year agreement is done, then that's when the termination of the agreement. That's the effective term. Party B shall implement the VTuber activities at the place designated by Party A. So what this says is that this they can tell you to go anywhere. If they want you to do it at the Niji Sanji headquarters, they can make you do it at the Niji Sanji headquarters and you have to go. In the event that Party A requests to report to Party B with respect of implementation status of the VTuber activities, Party B shall immediately report to Party A. So if they require you to go somewhere and to answer them for something or make a report or something like that, you have to immediately do it. Drop everything you're doing and do it within a reasonable time frame, which is, you know, I don't know what that is, but immediate means that right now, in this moment, Article 4, Consideration. The consideration for the VTuber activities herein referred to as consideration shall be as follows. 1. The consideration of distribution of the contents. 50% of the amount paid to actually received by Party A with respect to the distribution of the contents, which means that 50% after YouTube has taken their cut, after YouTube has given them, the, you know, taken their 30% off or whatever it is, you get 50% after that with the main things that go through. I'm guessing this is Super Chats. Exclusive fee. In the event that Party A determines that it is necessary for Party B to purchase new equipment for performing the distribution of contents, and Party B purchases the equipment designated by Party A, and Party B may charge Party A for an amount equivalent to the cost of such purchase up to 200,000 yen, which is about 1,300 bucks. 
of as of right as of saying this. So provided, however, no exclusive fee will be charged if this agreement is terminated due to cancellation, termination, or other circumstances by the last day of the month, following the month that includes the date of execution of this agreement. So there's moments where they won't charge you, but if it's before the specific period, like if you go through the one year period, a lot of people have this. If you go through a certain, you know, period where, where you're kind of like being tested, if it's past that period, you don't have to pay them back. If it's before that period, whatever one they decide, you have to pay them back. You have to pay them back the 1300 they gave you or whatever it is in, in current terms. Performers royalty, number three, the amount determined upon separate discussion. So they make another agreement that you have to sign for the royalties. For the performance fee for live and concert, another thing you have to sign separate between this. So you have to make all the discussions for, loyal, for royalties and for fees and live concerts. And that's what um, what is annoying. And they say uh, performance fee for movies, TV, radios, and commercials. Again, separate agreement. Merchandising. Again, separate agreement. We know the merchandising nowadays is two percent. Uh, we know the the other discussions are very low as well, from what I understand. The only thing that's different is voice packs, which gives them a large amount. Now for two. The payment method should be as follows. Party A shall calculate the consideration set forth by the preceding paragraph, item one, at each month, at the end of each month, and pay the total amount to party B. So any of these other agreements that you have, including the, the main fees, you get that at the end of the month. And they have to give it to you by the end of the following month at the bank account designated to party B. The transfer fees shall be borne by party A, which is normal. The the organization pays for your the, the fees to get that transferred into you because it would be really unfair if they didn't. If the consideration does not exceed the transfer fee and the amount of advance payment, the party may carry over the payment of consideration to the next month. Um, so that means that they can go into the next month if it's not enough, that kind of thing. Party A shall pay the consideration set forth in the preceding paragraph, item two, by the last day of the month following the month that includes. So basically everything, it's it's by the end of the month that precedes what happened, basically by the end of that month, uh, throughout the whole execution of the agreement, the, the whole time that the agreement is, is, is done. Um, the provisions of the the provisions of the preceding item shall apply uh, to the handling of bank transfer fees. So basically, even in this one, bank transfer fees are covered. Party A in Part Three shall pay consideration in the three through six, in accordance with the payment methods already described. So Article Five: Actual costs. The actual cost of transportation when Party B goes to the office or visits the office at the request of the Party A, and the actual cost of expenses incurred in connection with the execution of work to Party B shall be borne by Party A. 2. Party B shall issue and send Party A an invoice stating the total amount of actual costs, etc. by a third business day of the month following the month in which the actual costs are incurred. So they want you to put pay everything yourself. Like if you had to go to Japan, it could be up to $2,000 depending on, where you, uh, on, on what you're going to be getting. Uh, they want you to take all those costs yourself. You haven't been paid yet, maybe. You're going to take all those costs yourself, invoice them to them, and then they'll pay you back. I've had to go through that with a company myself. When you travel, a lot of companies do that. It bit you have to be pay a lot of serious stuff, and it really does suck. But they, it's not unheard of for them to do this. Article six, subcontracting. Party B shall not be subcontract or all, all or part of VTuber activities to a third party or jointly with a third party, except for prior written consent. So everything that is subcontracted, like if you're doing a, a collab with somebody or collab with an organization, it has to go through Niji Sanji. In the event that Party B subcontracts all or part of VTuber activities to a third party or jointly conducts these activities with a third party in accordance with the provisions of the preceding paragraph, Party B shall impose on such third party the same obligations as those of Party B set forth in this agreement and shall be jointly and severe, severely liable severely liable with such third party and acts. Basically, the third party has to contract with, with uh, basically uh, Niji Sanji from what I get if there is ever a third party that gets subcontracted in there. Article 7, provision of information. Party B shall provide Party A with certain information here and after referred refer to as information requested by Party A. Uh, they shall not conduct VTuber activities without providing the information to Party A in accordance with Provision 1. Party B shall not provide false information with Party A when providing the information in accordance with Provision 1. In the event that the information provided by Party A in accordance with the provision of Paragraph 1 is amended, Party B should immediately provide Party A with the amended information. Basically, they want to know all the information that they can possibly get. In the event sent forth in, part, in Paragraph 1 of the preceding paragraph, if requested by Party A, Party B shall submit to Party A materials to prove the information. Basically, you have to, you know, in case if it's your, your birthday and all that kind of stuff, you have to provide proof of it in order to have the things continue. Article 8. When requested by Party A, Party B shall participate in meetings, conferences, etc. 
that Party A deems necessary for the execution of the VTR activities and shall cooperate with the operation of program by Party A, except in cases where Party A deems there are unavoidable reasons. So you always have to go to any meetings they want you to go to. You always have to do anything that they want you to do. It kind of seems kind of unfair to me, but that's the way it is. If Party B is requested by Party A to appear as the character or to engage in other activities as part of the VTuber activities, Party B shall comply with such requests. Article 9. Conducting training. And Party B shall participate in VTuber training program upon request of Party A. So if you're doing training, you're probably going to be an employee. And all these restrictions of you having to do this, having to do that, having to go everywhere, you're an employee. Sounds very much like an employee to me. The timing and location of the VTuber training program and other methods of implementation of the VTuber training program shall be determined by Party A. If Party B refuses to participate in the VTuber training program without justifiable reason despite the request of Party A, Party A may terminate the agreement. So if you don't want to go into the, tr the training, they can terminate it very much like they can do with a, an employee. Not so much with a contractor. Contractors aren't forced to go to training. Employees are. So that's that's what seems very much like it's an employee contract, including uh, individual agreement on this article. Party A should not be liable for compensate for any damages incurred by Party B as a result of the cancellation of this agreement, pursuant to the provisions of the preceding paragraph. So basically, like if you actually owe them something, it's not their fault. Article 10. Lending of materials. Party B shall procure materials, etc., under its own costs and responsibilities. I think that's where they were able to make it so that, remember, uh, Sayu said that they didn't cover any of the expenses of getting their debut streams. This is where they could cover their ass with this because it says that Party B has to get everything for themselves and it's their own responsibility. That's how they were able to do it so that no debut stream under EN, according to, to Sayu, was ever covered and they were always in the red. That's also how Selen had to spend 200k of her own money to get things for artists. All those materials had to be gotten by them, according to this agreement. This is what I'm understanding. Notwithstanding the provisions of the preceding paragraph, Party A may lend the materials, etc. for value or gratuity. Uh, when Party B uses materials in accordance with the provisions in the preceding paragraph, Party B shall comply with the following items. Party B shall deal with the materials with duty of care, which means you have to take care of it. Notwithstanding the provisions in the preceding paragraph, Party A may lend the materials, etc. for, you know, all this kind of stuff. And um, Party B shall deal with the materials with duty of care. Party B may not use the materials, etc. for any purpose other than the VTuber activities. Without the prior written consent of Party A, regardless of the method, Party B may not reproduce or alter materials. Uh, without the prior written consent, they may not disclose, transfer, lend, grant the license to use materials, etc. to a third party. So you can't, like if they give you promotional materials, you can't push it on to a third party. You can't share it with a third party. You can't do anything like that. In the event of any of the following items, Party B shall immediately return the materials, etc. to Party A or suspend use of pursuant to instructions of Party A. So they get to see, say when you use it or don't use it. That kind of makes sense. Provided, however, that this shall not apply to the event, Party A separately describe, decides not to return, not to request return. So they, they, re, they reserve the right to not request return of anything. Um, continuing on, in the event that the VTuber activity ends, in the event that the terms of lending have passed, so they can decide not to get it back, in the event that agreement ends, in the event that Party A requests Party B to return materials or suspend use of, in the event that the materials, etc., are lost, damaged, reduced in weight, or changed in quality, etc., due to the intentional act or intentional omission or negligence of Party B, then Party B shall compose, compensate Party A in total e amount equal to the repair cost or the replacement cost of the materials. If you damage it, you pay for uh, the expenses to compensate them. In such an event, Party A may deduct compensation expenses from the payment Party B, so they can take it out of your paycheck pretty much. Article 11, Management of Information of the Account. In the event that Party A creates an account, the Party A may provide Party B with user ID and password of the account when it comes to Twitter, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, all the information of the account. In the event of preceding paragraph, Party A may amend the information of the account and Party B, the information of the account amended. So if they add anything, add any, you know, anything in there that they may add to your YouTube, Twitter, etc., they'll put it in there and then you'll be fine. Uh, in the event that Party B creates the account, Party B shall provide Party A with all the information of the account so that they can skinwalk you like they did with Selen. Basically, they have the rights to go in at any point in time and act as you, pretty much. Party B may not amend information to the account provided Party A in accordance. So you can't change your password. You can't do anything like that. Um, you can't do anything of that sort. Uh, and it says with the provisions of paragraph one or paragraph two in the account provided to Party A in accordance with the provisions of paragraph three, basically you can't you can't change things. Party A may use the account for the purpose of management of the program, like as to quote unquote manage you while you're doing this. They can do that. Party B may use the account within the scope 
approved by party A. Party B shall manage the information of the account under its own responsibility, own cost and responsibility, and may not provide a third party with it. Party A shall not be liable for any damages resulting from insufficient management of the information of the account of Party B, errors in use or abuse by Party A. Party B shall immediately follow the instruction of Party A regarding management of the account. Basically, it's, it's full-on restrictiveness with the account. Party A, which is Nidhi Sanji in this case, has control over everything. And Party B, which is whoever signs this, would not be able to stop them. In the event that the information of the account is being stolen or misused by a third party, uh, including the event that Party B has given the information to a third party, Party B shall immediately report such a fact to Party A. Basically, if, if you get, got hacked or you accidentally gave it to someone else, you um, you have to give that information to Nidhi Sanji. Party B may not use the account or may not use, allow any third party to use it after the end of the agreement. When you're terminated, you can't use it, pretty much. Article 12. Party A, Party A and Party B hereby mutually confirm that ownership, intellectual property rights, and other rights shall become belong to Party A or third party who has granted Party A license to use. Party B may not perform any act, including but not limited to dissembling, decompiling, reverse engineering, that may infringe on any legal right to Party A or any third party who has granted license to it. So you can't use your, your same stuff for you know your, your future life if you leave. Even in the event that ownership rights, copyrights, and other legal rights arise to Party B in the, in the course of YouTuber activities, all those rights shall be transferred to Party A. If you create something, if anything that gets created while you are in that organization, any art, anything like that, it goes directly to Party A, which is which is Nidhi Sanji. In the event of the preceding paragraph, even if the rights arise, the Party B are reserved to Party B due to an agreement between Party A and B. Uh, party A may freely use, excluding including sublicensing to a third party, such rights without paying any compensation. So if you, even if both sides agree it's your stuff, they can still use it because you are under them from what I get. Except in the event that Party A agrees in advance, Party B may not exercise as against Party A or third party that receives a license from Party A to use such rights, the moral rights of, of the author pertaining to works that were prepared or created during the course of performance of VTuber activities. Except in the event that Party A agrees in advance, Party B may not exercise as against Party A or third party uh, such rights, moral rights, etc. You can't basically say, this is my rights, these are my copyrights. You know, you can't use this. They can use it however they want. Except for the consideration, Party B agrees that any and all profits from the products of the character, you know, it means voice packs, etc., uh, and any of the contents related to the programmer, regardless of the name, so Party A gets all the benefits from it, and then they pay you based on your agreements previously. Article 13, Revenue. Party A shall be shall have the exclusive right to demand and receive from third parties any and all consideration arising from feature activities of the second party. So if they, if like Konami wants to have something with you, they have to go through Nidhi Sanji and pay them for it. Article 14, warranty against defects. In the event that the VTuber activities is for the purpose of preparation of deliverables, Party B hereby warrants that the deliverables are free from defect. Um, in the event that the preceding paragraph the, if there exists any defect in any deliverables that were delivered by Party B that could not be dis been discovered in ordinary acceptance inspection and, and inspection then during the period of one year, one three year after discovery of such defect, Party A may make a demand to Party B to repair. So if anything gets damaged, like your computer that they gave you, anything else that gets damaged, um, you have to repair it, basically. 15. Prohibited actions. 1. Party B may not engage in any of the following acts. Broadcasting, cable broadcasting, or public transmission of the following images, etc., using the video hosting services, social media, or other means. These are things that they, they can get you terminated. Uh, images that infringe or infringe on intellectual property rights, portrait rights, rights of privacy, rights of honor, which is a big thing in Japan, economic trust, or other rights of interest of interested party A, the external service provider, or third parties. Images that are related to criminal acts or violation of public order, that are obscene or harmful, harmful to youth, that contain CP, for the purpose of sexual uh, of sexual stuff, uh, intercourse, dating, etc., images that induce dangerous behavior such as drinking, drug use, abuse, um, images that induce you know, bullying or anything of a third party that contain discriminatory remarks. So Uki should have been hurt with this one. The eight should have been Uki right here with discriminatory remarks or hate speech. That's Uki right there. Nine images, etc., that violate the agreement, individual agreements, external use laws, regulations, or internal rules of organization to which party A or VTuber belongs to. Basically anything that breaks the law, you can't have it there. Uh, images which the user does not have a right to use and which the user has not obtained permission. Images that are in violation of public office's election law, that's in Japan, I guess. Images that may cause trouble or discomfort to a third party, again, Japan. Images in which confidential information of party A is posted. That's just doxing, of course, not allowing doxing. Uh, 
images in which the location of Party B's residence, place of work, location of facilities, manager of Party A, or other information can be further posted under the doxing thing. Uh, Party A seems inappropriate. Anything that Nidhi Santi thinks you shouldn't have is the last one right there. The infringement, of, the infringement of intellectual property rights, portrait rights, rights of privacy, honor, economic trust, other rights, interest party A, the external service provider, or any other third parties. Uh, it restricts the acts to criminal acts or violation of public order and morality. Sending the information uh, that falls under any of these following items, these are all prohibited and can get you fired, pretty much. Information that infringes uh, or may infringe on intellectual property rights, portrait rights, rights to privacy, honor, economic trust, other rights interests of party A or external parties, information that is related to criminal acts or violation of public order or morality, information that is obscene or harmful to youth, which is, you know, marked before as well. The CP thing, the, this is all basically just a repeat of the stuff up there that we just read. In the event that party A determines that images regarding the social media disseminating falls within any items in paragraph one, item one, that it may fall within the same party A may delete all or basically if, it, if you mess up they'll delete everything all the images regarding social media disassembling disseminating without the consent of party b the same shall be applied to the event that party a determines that the information sent by party b falls with any of the items in paragraph a in paragraph one item two or they may fall within the same thing so basically they reserve the right to remove any images that you put on there if it doesn't fit the criteria that they had before party b may not disseminate the information including but not limited to disseminating social media services like twitter and stuff as a character and may not disseminate the information regarding the character after the end. So basically, when you are terminated, you cannot be the character anymore in any social media. During the effective term of this agreement or the individual agreement, other than the distribution of contents, Party B may not distribute images or anything else, including but not limited to video stuff, video hosting, or audio distribution as a distributor of images, etc. Basically, once you're not the VTuber, you can't distribute anything without the prior written consent of Party A. Even if you are, you can't do it without Nidhi Santi's approval. For the period of six months after the end of this agreement, or at the end of individual agreement, if the end of this agreement is during the effective period, Party B may not distribute the images, etc. So this is this is a a non-disparagement, non-disclosure thing for six months as a VTuber for a third party without the prior written consent of Party A. If you want to do anything for six months after you are there with a third party, you have to get consent with Party A from it seems like. This is just weird. As a VTuber at all. It says, it doesn't even say as the VTuber that they had. It's just a VTuber at all from what I'm seeing. If party A determines that party B has violated or is likely to violate the provisions of the preceding two paragraphs, party B shall, in response to requests from party A, answer the questions from party A to submit the materials specified by that person, Nidhi Sanji in this case. In the event of the preceding paragraph, party B shall immediately cease all activities in violation of the paragraph four in accordance with the instructions of party A or follow the restrictions designated by Party A. During the term of this agreement, including individual agreements in this section, as well as after the termination of this agreement, Party B may not disclose to any party that the VTuber, including Party B, are appearing as the character without prior written consent. So you can't appear as a character. I think this is all appearing as the character. I may be wrong. Uh, let's see. And that's something that we just read. Uh, now we're going to part eight of this. During the terms of this agreement, including individual agreements in this section, as well as after the termination of this agreement, Party B may not disclose to any third party that a VTuber, including Party B, are appearing as a character, as I've said before. In the event that Party B falls under any of the following items, Party A may suspend the Party B's participation in the program without needing notice from Party A. In the event that Party B breaches any of the provisions of the agreement or the individual agreement, they can suspend your activities. It's up to them, of course. And these are other protections. In the event that is discovered that there is a falsehood in the information provided under the provision of Article 7, in the event that Party B has conducted uh, or attempted to conduct activities in accordance with the program in a manner or for a purpose that may cause damage to the user, provider, or third parties. So if you're doing things that will damage the image or damage, you know, Nidhi Sanji in any way, you can be stopped. In the event that Party B is unable to receive the service from external service provider due to violation of external terms of use, if you violated YouTube's terms of service or Twitter's terms of service, then that also goes against you. In the event that Party B interferes with the operation of the program regardless of method, in the event of the death of Party B, in the event that Party B is subject to commencement of guardianship, conservatorship, or assistance, in the event that Party B does not conduct a distribution of context for more than one month and does not respond to any communication. So if you decide, screw it, 
I signed this, but I'm not going to do anything. That's when they can take you off. In the event that Party B is a minor, adult ward, or a person under curatorship, or a person under assistance, and have not obtained the consent. So if you can't legally consent, and you have not given consent, then they can terminate the contract. And it said, in the event that Party A determines that the con continuation of VTuber activities by Party B is inappropriate in addition to what is provided for the preceding items. In the event that Party B falls under any of the items in the preceding paragraph, Party B shall, as a matter of course, forfeit the benefit of time in respect to any law obligations owed to Party A. So if, if they decide to, that you're done, you're just done, pretty much. It's, that's what I'm getting from all this. Party A may terminate the provision of the program at any time in its discretion. They have the right to terminate you at any point in time, fire you at any point in time. A lot of, a lot of uh, contracts have this. And the VTuber activity shall naturally suspend with the termination of the provisions of the program. In this case, Party A will notify the VTuber in advance. Party A shall not be liable for any damages incurred by Party B as a result of action taken by Party B in accordance with the provision of this article. So basically, if you lost a lot of money, you can't sue them for it, is what, this, what I'm getting from this. Article 17. Penalty. In the event that Party B falls under the following items, Party B A may demand a Party B a penalty equivalent to 50% of the amount of the consideration. So 50% of your pay, they can take up to 50% of your pay. This is crazy. Stipulated in Article 4. This is what I'm getting. And uh, Paragraph 1, Item 1 of the month preceding the month in which the date of e relevant event fails. So this, after YouTube takes your 30% and they give you your 50%, they can take 50% of that if you mess up. In the event the Party B falls under any of the items set forth in the preceding article, Paragraph 1, in the event that Party A terminates the agreement, According to individual agreement in this article, due to a reason attributable to Party B in accordance with the provision in this agreement. Notwithstanding the provision in the preceding paragraph, in the event that Party B breaches the provisions in Article 15, Paragraph 4, Party A may demand a penalty from Party B up to the higher of the following amounts. The amount equivalent to the total amount of consideration received from Party A, so they can take all of your money. It seems like all of the, the, the money they gave you for the past month. Individual agreement during the period when uh, the, the, the stuff happened. When the Party B was in breach, in Article 15, Paragraph 4. The amount equivalent to the total amount of consideration received by Party B from Party based on provisions of this agreement for the 12 months prior to the month in which the second party was found to be in breach of Article 15. This sounds like they can take your money from last year too. Holy crap. The total amount of remuneration for activities related to the said violation and any other money obtained by Party B from activities related to said violation. It seems like they can take all your money. It seems like, possibly. I may be reading this wrong. Notwithstanding the provisions from paragraph 1, in the event that Party B breaches the provisions in Article 15, Part 5, Party A may demand a penalty from Party B up to the higher of the amount set forth in the preceding paragraph, items 2 and 3. They can choose to take everything. They can choose to take what they paid you for the last month, what they paid you for the last couple of months, whatever they want. The procedures of the preceding three paragraphs shall not preclude Party A from claiming compensation from Party B for damages in excess of the penalty amount. So they can even sue you for more if they wanted to. So far, this has become really crazy. Article 18, Disclaimer of Warranty. Party A makes no warranty to Party B that Party B will earn a certain amount of profit, so they can't guarantee what you're going to be making. Party A makes no warranty that Party B that regarding this program, including but not limited to a com conforming, conforming of a particular purpose. They, they can't promise, you know, voice backs and all that kind of stuff, it seems like. Even in the event that Party B is unable to conduct VTuber activities due to inevitability of the external services, Party A should not be liable for it. They, they are not liable to pay you if you don't have internet. Pretty much. In the event that Party B uses external services that con to conduct VTuber activities, Party B shall comply with the external terms of use at its own responsibility. And in the event that a dispute arises between Party B and external service provider, Party A shall not be liable for such dispute. Party B shall investigate at its own responsibility and expense whether or not conduct its activities violates applicable laws and regulations, internal rules of industry organizations, etc. Party A does not warrant in any ways that the VTuber activities of Party B will comply with applicable laws and regulations. So they can't, it, you know, they can't say whether it's going to be legal or not in your location from what I am getting here. Um... Any transactions, communications, this is part six, disputes, etc., arising between Party B and external service provider or other third parties in connection with the VTuber activities shall be handled and resolved at the responsibility of Party B. And Party A shall not be responsible for such matters. Party A shall not be liable for any interruption, suspension, termination, unavailability, or change in the provision of program by Party A. So deletion, loss of video, message or information of Party B, cancellation of registration, loss of data due to activities based in the program, or malfunction or damage of equipment, or any other damage, basic if you lose data, if you lose things like that, Niji Sandy's not responsible. Party A should not be liable for damages incurred by Party B in relation to any VTuber activities, uh, which is kind of interesting, except in cases where Party A is intentionally or grossly negligent. So this is negligence. If they have negligence, then yes, they're responsible. If it's just something that happened because it happened, then no. 
uh, even in the event that party A is liable for damages to party B, party A's liability for damage shall be limited to the total amount paid by party A to party B for the last six months. So you can't sue them for more than six months of your last pay in case if you get hurt or anything like that. Like if you're going to a concert and you get hurt somehow. This is really strange. Um, we're going to Article 19. In the event that party B ceases causes any damage to party a due to breach of this agreement or the individual individual agreement or due to any reason attributable to party b in the connection with its participation in the program the party b shall compensate party a for all such damages not only direct or indirect damages or ordinary damages but also damages including lost profits lost business opportunities business interruption or under other indirect damages special damages so if you're like an uki where people stop you know ta using nidhi sanji or anything like that they can technically uh sue them for damages because their their reputation was harmed. In the event that Party B receives a complaint from its dispute with other VTubers, the external service providers, or third parties in relation to the program, Party B shall immediately notify Party A of the details. Like if you get a copyright strike, etc., you have to let let Party A, which is the Sanji, know. In the event of the preceding paragraph, Party B shall handle such claim or dispute at its own cost and responsibility and report its progress to part. So they're not responsible for any legal stuff uh, upon request from Party A. So if you are sued or anything like that, you have to cover that yourself. Or if you need to, you know, change anything up, you cover that yourself. In the event that Party A receives any claim from external service providers for any third party or infringement of rights or any other reason in connection with Party B's participation in the program, Party B shall compensate Party A for the amount Party A was forced to pay. If they're forced to pay for anything on your side, you have to, you have to compensate them, it seems like. Uh, in, if it becomes if it's due to any lawsuits or any claims or any things like that, you know, anything you damage, pretty much. So you have to pay them back. Uh... If it's attributable to you, it's if it's your fault. Article 20, termination. In the event of any of the following events arises in respect to Party B, then without needing any kind of notice from Party A whatsoever, Party A may terminate this agreement so they can terminate you at any time. They don't even need to let you know. They did that with Selen. They didn't let her know. And this is where this all started, Selen Totsky. In the event that Party B breaches any of the provisions of this agreement and does not cure such breaches for a reasonable period of time, they can do that. In the event that Party B, they, they can terminate you. In the event that Party B re receives a seizure, provisional seizure, provisional disposition, or disposition for tax delinquency, so if you have anything with the IRS, petition for com compulsory auction, anything like that, they can um, they can release you. In the event that there's an application for commencement of procedures for bankruptcy, if you are going bankrupt, corporate arrangement, civil rehabilitation of, or in this case, Nidhi Sanji, if Nidhi Sanji is doing that, if Nidhi Sanji doesn't pay any of that they can do that you know our civil rehabilitation commencement of procedures for corporate re reorganization or commencement of special liquidation or in the event that there arises any circumstances that gives rise there too so it's protecting them they can they can let you go for that what it seems like in the event that there's an act of betrayal against party a or an act against public order and morals if you're doing like nude stuff or anything like that they can take you off or and party a determines it unreasonable to continue the contractual relationship in the event that a check or bill is dishonored or there's a situation as payment suspension, etc. So if you fail to pay them or something like that, but it seems like they can let you go as well. In the event that Party A terminates this agreement pursuant to provisions of the preceding uh, paragraph, Party A may demand that Party B deliver the deliverables that have been completed or are in the process of being completed by the time of such termination. The exercise of right of termination pursuant to paragraph 2 shall not preclude the exercise of the right of Party A to make the demand against Party B for compensation damages. Now we're going to Article 23. We continue with Article 23, amendments to this agreement. In the event that Party A amends this agreement, Party A shall notify Party B within writing the details of the amendment. In the event that Party B does not object to any amendments in the terms of this agreement within 14 days after the notice pursuant to, per to the paragraph, Party B shall be deemed to have agreed to the amendments. So if you forget to, to send, like, hey, I don't agree with this, the, the amendments are going to go through. The same shall apply if Party B conducts any activity under this program within the same period. So basically, if you're... If you do, from what I'm seeing here, they could. If you do anything VTuber wise, they can still make the amendments go through. From what it looks like, methods of communication and notification, any inquiries and other communications or notices from Party B to Party A regarding this agreement, including individual agreements of this article, as well as any other communications or notices from Party B to Party A, shall be conducted by a method pres prescribed of Party A. So you you have to um, ha communicate with them the way that they want you to. Twenty five assignment of this agreement. Party B shall not be assigned, transfer, create security on or otherwise dispose of the status under this agreement including individual agreement of the article or rights and obligations under this agreement to a third party without prior written consent so basically that you can't transfer any of this stuff to like konami or something like that or uh, your brother your sister or any of that that kind of stuff without prior consent of nidhi sanji party a transfers this business relating to the party to the program to a third party whether a business by a business transfer 
or company split or any other matters due to the transfer party a may transfer its status under this agreement its rights and obligations under this agreement and an information of other customer information to the transferee of the transfer and party b shall be deemed to have agreed to the transfer in the paragraph so anything that that Niji Sandy wants to transfer, they can do it, and you just automatically, because you signed this, you agree to it. Article 26, exclusion of antisocial forces. Each party hereby represents and warrants that currently it is not organized crime group, a group affiliated with organized crime group, a group that carries out activities that are contrary to the public welfare, or any other antisocial forces, here and after collectively antisocial forces, and it does not have any relation whatsoever with any antisocial forces, and that it will not have any relation whatsoever to these forces in the future. You're not a part of a gang, you're not a part of the Yakuza, they're not a part of any of this. Each party hereby affirms that it will not, either itself or through a third party, uh, antisocial force, use the force of, anti of that force to make an improper demand or otherwise carry an act that hinders business in any other way. Basically, you can't do, um, you can't like bribe or, you know, extort anybody, any of that kind of stuff. Each party may, without condition, to terminate this agreement and the individual agreement in the event that it is discovered that the other party is an antisocial force, in the event that there arises suspicion that the other party is part of that force, or in the event that the other party, either itself through third party, antisocial force, use the force of that a a AF to make an improper demand, or in the event that the other party used in force to carry out an act that hinders business. So if you, if what I'm getting there, if you harass, if you bully, if you use any type of antisocial thing, if you get violent with somebody, um, it, it's means for, you know, you can't be doing that. It's means for them to terminate you. Article 27, severability. In any provision, even if any provisions of this terms and conditions or any part of the provision is decided as invalid or unenforceable pursuant to the Consumer Contract Act or any other laws, regulations, or the like, the remaining provisions of these terms and conditions and the remaining part of the provision which is decided isn't as invalid or unenforceable shall continue to be fully effective. This is illegal as far as I know. And the company and the VTuber shall amend the invalid or unenforceable provision or part of the, the extent. Basically, they're saying everything remains valid even if it's been told we're not to remain valid and we are going to adjust it based on what we're told, I guess. But no, if a, if a judge tells you it's invalid, it is invalid it is not valid. It is not going to be, you know, done that way. Any extent necessary to make it lawful and enforceable and shall make efforts so that they can ensure to report the invalid or enforceable provision as a part as well as the same effect from the legal and economic perspectives. So I say they can they can amend it that way if uh, if it's told that um, that the court like a court tells them that they have to do it. The following provisions shall survive and continue to be effective after the termination of this agreement. One, three, four, you know, all these other articles here, Article 15, all these basically says even if you're being terminated, all of these remain in force, which is basically the ones that you can't say anything against them. You can't uh, do your VTuber activities, I guess, as the person. Uh, they try to restrict you a lot with termination, which is very strange. It's basically all the restrictions that I said before that I thought were kind of weird. They uh, still are enforceable after the termination of the agreement. Article 29, individual agreement. Party A and Party B shall conclude an individual agreement when deciding matters not stipulated in the agreement. In the event that an individual agreement is ex executed based on the provisions of the preceding paragraph, the provisions of this agreement shall apply to matters not stipulated in the individual agreement, and in the event of the provisions in the individual agreement conflict with the provision of this agreement, the provisions of the individual contract shall take precedence. Basically, what I'm getting from there is that if um, if everything is is done based on everything before all you know the agreement is done based on everything that we've read so far um, if even if there's conflicting things in there the provisions of the individual contract will be continuing even if there's conflicts of like oh you know this doesn't make sense this conflicts with that this does all this stuff type of stuff it is still precedence is still enforceable according to what they're saying Governing Law and Jurisdiction, Article 30. The governing law of this agreement shall be in the laws of Japan, and the Tokyo District Court shall have exclusive jurisdiction of the court in the first instance, with respect to any and all disputes in the relation to this agreement. Now they're saying you have to be going by the laws of Japan. I, From what I understand, that's not how contract law works. Contract law will, will have to be based on the area where you're contracting. For example, if over here in California, they contract me with a lot of things that are illegal over here in California, all those things are unenforceable. If they try to come after me, it's unenforceable here in California. So they cannot come after me in here in California. If they want to sue me in Japan, they can, but I'm not a, I'm not a citizen of Japan. So they it, it would go nowhere for them, from my understanding. Article 31, matters of discussion. With respect to any doubt regarding the interpretation of any provision of this agreement or any matter that is not prescribed in this agreement, Party A and Party B shall hold discussions in good faith to resolve the matter. And that is normal. Party A is uh, marked as Riku Tazumi. 
And party B is whoever was going to be signing this. Is any color, Rikutazumi, that type of stuff was what party A was. And uh, I want to show that to you right now. This is what party A is. Party A is any color ink, Midtown East 11F, the Asakas Akasaka, you know, Tokyo Riku Tazumi representative director. Um, party B is just the person who's signing this. And of course, this is the long one, but we're done. And if you have any comments, of course, please let me know. As I said, this was a long one. We're pretty much done with this whole thing. I do appreciate you being here. I appreciate everything you've done for me. Uh, comment down below if you would like some clarifications, if you would like me to, uh, you know, let you know what I thought about this whole thing, what you thought about this whole thing, let me know down below. Also, my socials are in the description down below, as well as I'm going to give credit to the legal mindset as well, as I should, because he's the one who had all this information. Finally, uh, there's a video on your screen, which you might be interested in. Please take a look at that and take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself, hydrate, and just be well. Thank you. Bye-bye.